Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the preset editor for the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini. Now this, as you know, is my favorite portable little controller. Very capable, very portable and plays good, has a ton of controls and I just love this thing. It's the perfect on the go controller and it ends up sitting right up on my studio desk most of the time. But today I wanna to walk you through the preset editor which is a piece of software from M-Audio that you can use to build custom presets, both DAW and virtual instrument or effect presets for the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini. You can load them onto here. You can back up presets that are on here. And it's a really powerful tool that allows you to build on a user interface that's a lot better than trying to customize the controls by scrolling through this little screen here. So I'm gonna walk you through the ropes. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below. Now let's spin over to the computer. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download and install the preset editor for the Oxygen Pro Mini. We can get to this in a couple of different ways right now. The best way is probably through your account, assuming you've already registered your controller with M-Audio. Go ahead and sign in and you're gonna have a page called My Products. You'll have a link there for the most recent preset editor. Go ahead and download that and install it. Or you can go to the support menu up here, drivers and updates. In the left-hand side, click keyboard controllers. In the center, scroll down to the bottom and you'll have the Oxygen Pro Mini. And then over on the right hand side, choose your operating system. For me, this is Windows 10 64 bit. And then click on the show results button. This is gonna update the section down below. And at the bottom, you can see that there is the Oxygen Pro Mini preset editor version 1.0.2 for Windows. Click on that link. If you're using a Mac, I believe the most recent version as of making this video is 1.0.3. Go ahead and click the download now button. That's gonna download it to your computer. Go ahead and install that just like you'd install any other piece of software on your computer. And it's gonna end up in your start menu. Down in your start menu, you can find it probably in your recently added, or you can scroll down to the M audio menu and you should have the Oxygen Pro mini preset editor right there. So I've got that opened up already right here. I'm gonna minimize my browser. And this is what the preset editor looks like. So we've got three main pages to this preset editor, the preset screen, the DAW screen, and the global screen. I'll talk about all of these here in a minute. The first thing I wanna confirm though is that your controller is communicating properly with the preset editor. If the send and retrieve preset options are grayed out, that means the preset editor isn't communicating with your controller properly. Go ahead and make sure your controller's on. If it is, unplug and replug the controller with the preset editor open, and that should take care of the problem. While we're in here in the file menu, let's talk about these options. So send preset is to send a custom preset or settings that you've changed from the preset editor over to the controller itself. And then retrieve preset is to take presets from the controller and bring them into the preset editor. On the flip side, load and save preset are to load and save presets from the preset editor to your computer. So this is a great way to back up presets is retrieve a preset from the controller and then save that preset to your computer before you modify anything, just so you have a backup of the preset that came with the controller. So let's talk about these screens here for a minute. The preset screen is equal to preset mode on the controller itself. So you'll see this DAW preset button is not lit up, meaning we are in preset mode. We can hold down on that to select the different presets within the controller. Comes with a bunch of out of the box presets, but it also has some user presets here as well. We can select by clicking down on the encoder and then back over on the preset editor, we can retrieve any of these presets by going file, retrieve preset, and then we have to select which preset we wanna bring in. So you'll see this option for RAM. That would bring in whatever you've got currently on the controller. Maybe you've made some tweaks and things like that. You could bring that in from the RAM or you can bring in any of the 14 presets here. So let's bring in preset three, click get, and you'll notice that it says the preset's been retrieved. And here in the preset name, it says mini grand. So if we go over to the controller now and we select that mini grand preset, select that, you'll notice that the pads now reflect the colors of the pads 
in the preset editor. So we know we've got the right preset called up. We could make changes, we could back this up, we can make changes and send that back over. We're gonna use a user preset here though to make our changes. Before we do that, I wanna talk real quick about DAW mode and global. So DAW is equal to DAW mode on the controller. So over here, if you click on the DAW preset button, now we're in DAW mode. And if we hold down on that button, you'll notice a bunch of out of the box presets here. And then there's one user preset. So this controller comes with one user preset and we can actually see that if we go over to the preset editor, we click file, retrieve preset. You'll notice we don't have an option to pick which preset to bring in. It's only gonna bring in the user preset. You'll see preset name user. We can make changes to that, we can send that over, but unfortunately we can't modify the out of the box DAW presets that come with the controller. So if you use multiple DAWs and you wanna build custom presets for those DAWs, you'd have to save those to your computer and then load whichever one you wanna use at that time using the load preset and then sending that over to the user preset in the controller. The global screen here reflects the global menu here on the controller. So if we hold shift and mode global, you'll see we've got a bunch of global settings here. We can change these by going to the global page here in the preset editor and we can change those settings. We could retrieve the settings from the controller itself and then we could change these and send them over to the controller. You can't save and load between the preset editor and your computer, any of the system settings, only the preset and DAW settings. So back on preset mode, let's talk about building a custom preset. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to load up, we're gonna retrieve from the controller preset 10. Now, one thing I wish that it did do is show the preset name here instead of just preset one through 14. I'm gonna click get and you'll see that this one is preset 10. We could name this whatever we want over on the controller. Let's hold down on this preset button and let's pull up preset 10. I'm gonna click down and that selects preset 10. So then let's open mini grand. I know there's already a mini grand virtual instrument, but I think for this case, if we play the controller. All right, so let's build our own custom preset for the mini grand virtual instrument. Now, depending on the virtual instrument or effect that you're building a custom preset for, there's probably gonna be different ways to find out what MIDI messages are controlling the different parameters in the virtual instrument or effect. So in the mini grand, we can actually right click on any of the controls to see what CC message is controlling that parameter. So you can see it says forget MIDI CC7. So we know CC7 is assigned to this volume. We could go and do that to any one of these knobs and we could see this is 14. Maybe our reverb mix is zero. So let's go ahead and actually assign these to the knobs on our controller. So in this case, I want to assign knob one to the level knob in the mini grand. So again, right click on this and it says CC7 is our message there. So in the preset editor, let's click on this first knob. Now we could confirm that this is not set up yet because when we twist this first knob, nothing happens with our level in the software. So go ahead and click on the first knob here in the preset editor. Now let's go ahead and change this to seven. And let's send that over to preset 10. You have to make sure to select the preset you wanna send it to. So I'm gonna send it to preset 10. Successfully sent. And then now we can play. And our number one knob controls the level of the piano sound. Very cool. Now let's assign knob two to the modes of the piano. So this is CC14. Let's go up to knob two. Let's go down here and change this to 14. Now you can see there's other parameters. We could set the min and max values. We could set the MIDI channel that this is sending out on and a lot of different parameters depending on what you click. So for example, the sustain pedal has the ability to latch or not, min max values. Again, the keyboard, if you click that, you get the arpeggiator chord and scale mode settings. So a lot of different parameters you can change here. And then back up here, we change this to 14. Let's send that over as well. Send that to preset 10. And now when we turn knob two, you see it controls the mode.
pretty cool. So again, depending on the virtual instrument or effect you're using, you may be able to get a MIDI message list from the manufacturer. You may be able to hover over the control or right click on the control, or there may be a settings option where you can set which MIDI message controls which parameter inside the virtual instrument. Let's talk about the pads here for a minute. So on the pad, we've got a few different options here. Again, the MIDI channel, so you could have it go off the global MIDI channel, or in the case of drums, a lot of drums get sent out on MIDI channel 10. So we could change this pad to MIDI channel 10. We could pick whether it's a CC program, note, what kind of message gets sent when you hit that pad. And then the colors of the pads, when it's stationary and when it's being hit, whether latches on or off. And then in our case, because it's note, what note is actually being played when you play that pad. So lots of different parameters here. I'm not gonna go through every single one of the parameters because this video would be way too long, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can get to customizing controls for either your preset or if we go to DAW mode, we wanna use that user DAW preset. We can modify the different modes and channels that the different DAW controls of the controller send out, as well as in this case, the pads. We can set whether it's the same as the preset mode or we could customize for DAW mode what those different pads do. Maybe if we're using Ableton Live, we wanna trigger something, we could set that up here in the pads. So even though different virtual instruments and effects may have different messages and different ways to figure out how to control those with your controller, my hope is that this video gets you the majority of the way there, gives you some guidance as to where to start when it comes to customizing the controls, how to back up presets, how to load presets from your computer to the controller. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions at all, throw them down in the comments below. We've got a great community here. And if it's something I can't answer, hopefully someone else can answer it for you. Stay tuned for some more videos on some of the more specific functions like chord mode, scale mode, and arpeggiator on the mini. Those will be coming real soon. Thanks for your patience in this preset editor video. And thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when a new video comes out. Thanks for supporting the channel. Stay inspired and keep making that music. Yeah.